right, so what we're going to be doing is pretty straightforward. We're going to take your data set, which is unlabeled, and we're going to transfer the labels from a publicly available data set to label your data. This is an easy automated way to label the cell types of your single cell data. So the first thing we need to do is download the reference data set. So you can use any data set that's already labeled, but I highly recommend these three data sets. If you have mouse or human data, I'm going to be using tabula murasinus just because I think the data is a little easier to access than tabula murus. The data is available even if you don't have an AWS account. But if you do have an AWS account, you can search their bucket for specific data sets. I'm just going to download the official raw data set. So you can go here and you can just copy the link and then we're just going to curl that. And I'll keep this in my Jupyter notebook that I upload so you don't actually have to go find it yourself. And this should take a couple minutes to download, but after you download it the first time, you won't need to download it again. And if instead you had human data, you can just Google Tabula Sapiens Figshare and go to that first link. And then you can find which data set you're interested in. You can download it directly to your computer just by clicking download, or you can right click download, copy link. And then for this, I think Figshare, you need to use wget, and then you'll need to unzip it. And then you should have that H5AD file accessible. But anyways, we're just gonna use this Tabula Marcinus one when it's finished downloading. All right, now that that's finished downloading, we can import ScanP and SCBI. And then we're just going to go ahead and load in that ref data. And so there's two labels we're really interested in. One is the tissue and the other is cell ontology class. So I'm going to be labeling lung data. So I'm going to subset this and only take out the lung cells. First, let me show you all the different tissues it has. So these are all the different tissues in the data set. I only want lung, so I'm just going to subset ref data. Oops, forgot. Got to put dot obs there. All right, now we have 25,000 lung cells with multiple different cell types. Next, let's load in our sample data. I just have one sample called lung one, and I'm reading the 10x H5 directly, which requires that you need to pass far names make unique. So I have 12,000 cells in that sample, and you see there's no labeling or anything. So the first thing we want to do is actually combine the two data sets together. So we're just going to do an adata.concatenate and we're going to pass ref data. You see it puts the data sets together. So we have 36,000 cells. It just puts NA for all the columns that weren't in our data set. So let's just set up our SCVI object. So I should point out that when you do the concatenate function, it adds a new batch column. So whatever you're concatenating onto will always be zero. And then the rest will be added as one or higher if you have additional samples. So our batch key is just going to be the batch, which is that column name. So all we're really doing here is saving accounts layer and then finding the top 2000 variable genes so that we can train the model without it taking forever. So it's layer, not layers. So next we just have to set up the SCBI model. And again, we're passing the batch column as the batch key, so zero or one. And then we're gonna train the model and call it VAE. And this will probably take me about five minutes, but I also have a GPU. If you don't have a NVIDIA GPU, it might take longer. Okay, now that that's done, we have to do one quick cleanup step. So if we look at the observation data frame, we're gonna be mapping the cell ontology class. So we need to replace these NA values 
with a string and I'm just going to replace it with unknown. But first, since it's a category column, we have to add a new category and then we can fill all the NAs. Oops, this is supposed to be parentheses and I have to spell unknown correctly. So instead of NA, we have unknown. And now we can use this scanVI model to predict the labels for each cell. So we have to pass the unlabeled category, which is unknown. And of course, the labels that we want to transfer is the cell ontology class. So we set this model up and then we have to train it. And we're just going to set the max epochs to 20 and the end samples per label to 100. So this will be a little faster, so it should only take about a minute. So once that finishes training, we can get the predicted labels. So it just passes an array of cell types. So we can assign a new observation column based on these cell types. And I'm just going to call it predicted. So we just added this predicted column, which you see includes our sample cells. So there's multiple different things you can do now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a dictionary of the cell barcodes and the predicted values and then map it back onto the raw A data object. So only one extra step we have to do is that when we concatenate it, it adds a dash zero. So I'm going to remove the dash zero and then make this into a dictionary. So I'm just going to make a new column called BC2, just barcodes2. And then it's just going to be everything in the index except for the last two characters, which is the dash one or dash zero. And then I'm going to use BC2 in the predicted column to make a dictionary. So now we have this dictionary of cell barcodes and cell types. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reload my A data. And then if we look at it, obviously we have no observation data. So let's make a new column, call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it cell type. And it's going to be a data.obs. And then I'm going to map the index column, which is the barcodes, to that cell mapper dictionary we just made. And now you see we have a cell type for every barcode. So that's basically it. It's pretty straightforward. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly verify this and plot it just for fun. So I just did basic scan VP processing on the object. And then I plotted the UMAP. The mapping seems to have done a really good job. For example, here, since there were so many different cell types, it's kind of hard to tell which one's labeled T cell. So I just labeled all the T cell cells in red here. And if we look at the expression of CD3, we see that there's very high correspondence between the labeled T cells and CD3. And this was true for other cell markers as well. So it seems like the labeling did a really good job.